we're going to be talking about the heck job. That is that Nat Geo episode titled Outlaw Motorcycle Clubs. The only thing that really gets me is it's trending right now. So everybody around the world seeing it. But that could be a good thing as well because it is a hack job. There was two other clubs besides the Sons of Silence in that episode that we didn't know about. The episode starts with her saying she wants to get inside and learn what's going on, basically. And it shows a shooting with a Jeep. Supposedly, it was a professional hit on a member of a motorcycle club. Right off the bat, that's where she went. Even though everybody was under the impression and the reason why she was given access that she would be talking about biker rights. We even talked about trying to get it to where they could come and cover NCOM to see all the clubs together, the issues that they were facing. But instead, she went this route and made it into another gangland, basically. Actually, it was worse. It was a lot worse. She had people playing cartel members. If you look at the end of the video, and we'll go through it, there's a guy claiming to be a member of a 1% club that was at a cartel house, you know, with the drugs and all that type of stuff, talking like he didn't care he was on camera, and... The cartel don't mess around with 1% clubs because they're serious. Right there, and Shaggy, he's covered a lot of this. The cartel ain't afraid of nobody. None. They do not care. They take on governments. Do you really think that they're going to be afraid of motorcycle clubs? No. No. It's either he was an actor or a cop. It's one or the other. There's no way other to explain that. But let's go back. There was months of conversations going back and forth behind the scenes. Agreements that we thought were made. And if you see when she went to Sturges, for one... She says, my invite, after chopping up what I had to say for an hour and made it into three lines to fit what she wanted it to appear to be. Her invite, she got to sit down with the sons. And in there, she says she was given a list of questions that they could talk about. So right there shows everybody there was negotiations behind the scenes that you're not going to see on YouTube or hear about, but I can tell you it was there. And that's what led everybody to believe that this was going to be that type of episode. We didn't know they were going to throw drug cartels in there, any of that stuff. Boy, did they keep that one quiet. Yes. She had questions that were some, you know, the club agreed to talk about. I think the Suns did awesome by giving her nothing. And what's even funnier is she would bring up sexism. Now I understand she's a woman. And, you know, according to her liberal views, women should be involved in everything. Well, that's not how it is in that world, man. And to even think that way, she was a moron. What's even worse going through this is before she went there, she had to sit down with the ATF or the local town's cop, whatever you want to call it. And they were giving her all kinds of BS. And she said, well, if I wanted to get in, 
do you think it's possible? And he says, I don't think so. And then goes into the part with me, knowing this whole time you were talking to the club behind the scenes and got an invite. That's how bad media is. Media is not trusted for many reasons, and that's being one of them. They're like slithering little snakes. And then you're going to say, why? Why did you want to, Why did anybody get involved? Well, when you think it's supposed to be about this episode and you talk all the time to these people that say, hey, yeah, we're going to do this, you try to take them at their word because National Geographic, I have to say, is usually down the middle on stuff. They usually take pride in their series. Well, obviously, that didn't happen here. They had a goal for the gold. They had an opportunity to be able to go to other clubs if they did the right thing according to what everybody agreed on. They would have been able to see an uncom. But no, they decided they wanted to go gangland and try to match the History Channel, I guess. Vagos did great. And then the Mongols were in there. And what I found very interesting about that one, they brought a cop that was undercover. Now, we all know how them cops are. Talking this, talking that. The thing with the undercovers, there is tons of money in them operations. And they can't go away empty-handed on it. But she didn't tell you that. Then you had John Ciccone. Yeah, that should uh, ring a bell. He took her on a ride. Uh, Mongo's funeral was going on. And then they pulled over. Then little Dave came up. This is before he was thrown out of bed. And boy, did they have a, a cordial relationship. I suggest people look at that one uh, straight up. And one thing that was said, that 3 and 0 thing, that was messed up. That right there is like, damn, man, you're admitting to something like that? That's... <laughs> Watch out for Rico is all I can say. Anyway. So after that, she went into this cartel deal with supposedly this dude that was a member of 1% Club. They hit his face, all that crap. And he's just talking all kinds of smack. Now, if you're working with the cartel, I'm surprised he has a head. I'm surprised they didn't chainsaw him with some of the stuff he said. So that's what's leading everybody to believe it's either a cop or an, a paid actor. The point being is they hatcheted everything about 1% clubs. They really did. And they did it on purpose because you can tell she had an attitude during the whole series of events that she covered. She wasn't getting the answers she wanted. So she had an attitude. And as, uh, no more so than when she went to the son's camp. Because they completely shut her down. Wait a second here. We agreed on these questions. That's why you're here. Do you know they fed her? They welcomed her in to their compound that many don't get into? That tells you just the type of thinking that she really has. It's so messed up. But let me tell you something about cops. And your way of putting them on a pedestal. During that whole damn episode, you kept on saying... Well, I'm not buying the bad apple excuse. Meaning, there are a few people in clubs that do something stupid. We all know that. It's not the whole club in general. Hey, lady, half of these guys have a hard time paying $100 in dues. They're not gangsters. But you say you don't buy it. You don't buy that cause. 
Well, by your logic, then, you shouldn't be listening to the cops either. Isn't it that what they say is a few bad apples? They're the ones who do everything? Don't blame us. You'll buy that as their excuse. But God forbid a club says it like that. Let's take uh, a, a little example here for you. Today, the Dallas Police Department arrested Officer Brian Reiser, badge number 90, 9586, and charged him with two counts of capital murder. Two of them charged in a drug operation, another officer and his wife accused of conspiring to rob a casino. Former Columbus, Ohio police officer is now charged with murder for killing a black man back in December. Adam Coy was responding to a non-emergency call when he encountered Andre Hill inside a friend's garage. Tonight, yet another scandal in the Baltimore City Police Department, and this time a detective is, in, is indicted on federal charges accused of being involved in planting evidence and even falsifying a search warrant. Now to an Eyewitness News exclusive. In NYPD officer arrested for his alleged involvement in a drug ring on Long. Alexa Palabicki bailed out of the Sacramento County Jail. That's right behind me just hours after her arrest this afternoon. It all stems from a months long investigation into allegations she falsified police reports. Now to that scandal tonight for the NYPD and tomorrow court dates for seven cops hired to uphold the law but now charged with helping run a far-flung prostitution and gambling ring. Now to a developing story. An Anderson police officer is in custody accused of dealing drugs and doing it while on duty and in full uniform. Full uniform! Those are bad apples, are they not? Are they not bad apples? Should they represent the whole damn law enforcement community? Kind of like what you're claiming these people represent clubs. By your argu argument, it doesn't make sense. Not whatsoever. We're going to be doing a series on Bad Cops Exposed every Friday. And we're going to be using... The Henry A. Wallace Police Crime Database. And it's something that maybe, Mariana, you might want to look at. If you can't believe the bad apple story. Because cops, they're worse than outlaw bikers. The crimes that are committed by some in law enforcement, assault, murder, rape, this is done by law enforcement. And I can tell you, they're arrested probably a hundred times more than an outlaw biker that you're claiming is nothing but a criminal organization that you cannot believe that there's only some bad apples. It has to be everybody. Well, where's your argument with the cops here? If you're saying that, you're also saying it to the cops. But the problem is, now you're taking the cops and what they're saying and blanketing everybody about it. That's what you're saying. Huge crimes here. Now, what's even more funny was you were mad because there ain't no women in 1% clubs. Victims of police crime. 61.2% of women are the victims of cops' crimes. Do you know how many stories we do on them raping a woman or raping a child? 17.1% children unrelated to the officer. 
but you're over here praising these people you're over here praising john saxony that's what's unbelievable about your reporting during this whole thing everybody thought you had integrity that you were going to get both sides of a story we get it go for it talk to the cops we already know what's going to happen there but you were supposed to get both sides and when you t you know agreed upon the questions to get the invite you get all pissed off because you wanted to go off uh, script and they wouldn't tell you anything. That's why you were the way you were. Hell, you showed a whole B-roll of guys getting arrested here, guys getting arrested there. I just did the same thing with your uh, precious law enforcement. Anybody can do it. The problem is you didn't want to show it. No, you wanted to make them look like a bunch of criminals. 61.2% Mariana. How does that work for you? Now, there is right here. And this has probably went up. Almost a thousand cases of cops getting busted each year. I didn't see that in your report. I'd like to see your research on how many were outlaw bikers and how many they got arrested. It don't fit the narrative of the episode, does it? And that's the reason why people are so ignorant that they don't want to do the research on anything that they're watching. Women experiencing use of uh, police force rose dramatically. 353%. Ouch. But that's where we're getting our information from. This is an actual study. The Henry A. Wallace Police Crime Database. Because they wanted to make sure that the general public knew there was a problem with cops. Hell, the country almost burned last year because of them. Just to get your rocks off on an episode, you did a lot of people wrong. Personally, I think you need to uh, offer some corrections. You need to apologize for taking advantage of people. Because you'll never get access again to any clubs because of what you pulled. Creators everywhere. And what's funny about us creators is we got a combined reach that probably doubles or triples you people. And we get to the regular person. Because people are so sick and tired of the media lies that they don't want nothing to do with you. So they come to independence because they know they're going to get truth. They know they're not going to get bullshitted. And that's exactly what happened during that episode. I'm kind of pissed at myself, man, because I fell for your crap. Should have known this is the way you were going to do it. But see, we only had the hour conversation. It was between your directors and producers or whoever the hell it was. The whole time assuring us, that, yeah, this is what's up. But then you grab two other clubs and you're trying to make them look stupid as well. The only good thing you did was expose uh, what's-his-name's relationship with John Shaconi a lot more. That's the only good thing you did out of the whole damn thing. The rest of it was made-up crap. It was made up. And you asked that question. Well... 
why don't you want to talk? Why do you want the outside world not to know anything about you? Because of what you just did. That answers your question. That's why nobody's going to talk. You ruined it. You had a chance to see behind the scenes. So I, I, I hope that you really look at yourself in the mirror and say to yourself, get off of your high West Coast entitled thinking and look at the episode and what you truly done to a lot of clubs. You fed people's thoughts that every club is a criminal organization. You didn't even show the good stuff. Not even the good stuff. And I'm going to have a little series here in a second. And it's about the Hells Angels because everybody knows the Hells Angels, so that's why we chose that club. Uh, them doing good. Not one mention. No, instead... Cops say they use toy runs to cover up illicit activities. Bull crap, man. Let's take a listen to that. Welcome, Welcome to Around, Around the Valley. Valley. I'm Solomon, and today I'm here with Merle Hefferman. Um, and we are talking about the 17th annual toy run with the Hells Angels. Correct. Yes. Um, and this, this event has gone viral. Uh, last year, uh, ma many outlets were rep reporting it. My name is Merle Hefferman. Today we're out here at Walmart in Ingram and Herndon where we uh, get all these bikes for our toy run, our 16th annual toy run for the Fresno Pavarolo House. We have the summer rally for the Hells Angels in Clemson and they spent their morning playing softball. Tonight's 7 News reporter Nicole Ford talked to a local member for a biker breakdown of what's really going on. It's one of America's favorite pastimes. The fields and stands filled. I came out to watch the game and support these guys. Hundreds of men from across the country cracking the back. These clubs, they, they dress different than the normal people in church and everything. If you look close, you'll see all these players are members of the Hells Angels, an outlaw motorcycle club according to the Department of Justice. The tribe of Judah biker Byron Wood says just because they look tough on the outside doesn't mean they aren't good on the inside. These guys have helped me so much. They, uh, they, the, one of the clubs, the Hardwood Cruisers, put on a program for a while back after my wife had been in the hospital for 36 days, and the Angels came all the way from Charleston, raised $1,700 for her. Well, it's all fun and games on the field. This is where the national champion was won. This group is giving back, raising money to help the Pickens County Advocacy Center. Which has since gone viral. I was headed to Anderson, and when I got to Clemson, seen a few motorcycles. Those motorcycles belong to Hell's Angels, who were in Tigertown for their annual summer rally. The bikes were parked at the Comfort Inn. I did a U-turn, and I went back, and... I just pulled up to the guys. A chance encounter Christy had no idea she would be walking into. Something just led me there to go talk to them. Christy walked up and started to share Clay's story. I shed a few tears while I was telling them the story and I could just feel the compassion coming from these men. And then he asked me if he could pray for me. A moment Christy says she wanted to share. I made the Facebook post because just like suicide, the Hells Angels has a stigma. Speaking of stigmas, Christy has a message for all of us. Choose life. It's time to talk and end the stigma. End the stigma. That was a mother whose son committed suicide and the Hells Angels comforted her. Doesn't sound like a criminal organization to me now, does it? But you didn't show any of that in this episode that you just aired. Not one bit. You didn't show any of this. You showed the B-roll of members getting busted 
but not the good, and you sure to hell didn't cover law enforcement when they got busted, when they were doing the same crimes that schluck who sat across from you, who was an undercover, do. They didn't, you didn't do that. You didn't show any of it. We had to. So the clubs are doing these crimes. That's your position. You don't buy the bad apple story. Well, you shouldn't be buying the story of cops either then. Because they're worse. You, uh, What's good for the goose is good for the gander, isn't it? Why don't you do an episode on bad cops? No, because bikers are what brings in the money. Well, because of your greed, a lot of people are suffering from. You made legitimate organizations look criminal. Guys who go to work Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday, whatever it is, and put food on the table. And you're one of the reasons why clubs are profiled so much. Why people are thrown on the dirt because they wear a patch or don't even have to wear a patch to get thrown on the ground. You're the reason. Because you give these cops the outlet. Sad state of affairs, because we really thought that you were a reporter of integrity, that you would have shown both sides of the story, and your producers or directors, whatever they were, were legitimate. Cut and paste. Cut and paste. What, what do you not know that us creators do this for a living as well? And we know when something's cut and paste? The real world might not, but we do. And it's funny how you gave credits to the ATF and all that. Shutterstock. But you didn't even give credits for the clubs opening their doors to you, feeding you, taking you on a ride on a motorcycle. Didn't even give them credit for that. Because you had your own agenda coming into this whole thing in the first place. That's what it was all about was your agenda, getting your face plastered on a board, an ad board. I would have thought somebody like you would have had pride in their work and really showed all angles of a story. True journalism's dead unless you go to independence. I'm sorry to say, folks, true journalism is dead. They're pushing the agenda of themselves or for their corporate uh, masters. There no, there isn't no more investigative reporting. It's gone. See ya. Bye bye. Then you wonder why people go to cats like Tim Pole or Rogan or whatever it is because they're honest. You're supposed to put up both sides of the story, and you guys don't. But I can tell you what, nobody's going to ever talk to any mainstream media again because of what you did. You're never going to get the access ever again. So I hope it was worth that one episode when you could have had a whole series at your fingertips. A whole series. But you chose to be a bitch. 
you chose the easy way. I actually feel sorry for you. Because I wouldn't be able to look in the mirror after what you did. Not to a lot of these hard-working people. No. I hope it's all good in your multi-million dollar mansion and all that stuff. Looking at all us peons making money off of their back. I hope you're having a happy life. But one thing I do know is you have no integrity. Your word means nothing. It's garbage. Garbage. So, that is my feelings, guys. Again, go through and check out all the crimes that cops do. Something she refused to put in there. But it's a hack job. The whole episode's a hack job. It's actually worse than freaking uh, the History Channel's Gangland. That's how bad it was. As soon as I seen that teaser, I knew. I knew. Anyway, guys, I'm Adi. I'll talk to you later. Rock on. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.